Fun Fun University, we dive into the parameters of craft roulette and get all nerdy. If you like paper crafting nerdiness, you might like this. If not, you can always scroll down. <laughs> but we're glad to see you guys here. Thank you so much for joining us on Fun University. I will give you just another second or two to get all in that front seat or back seat, whichever you prefer. And we'll get you taken care of. I got, I got some good stuff tonight, I think. I do. How are you guys? Are you all ready? All ready for the fun? This is going to be the for uh, Craft Roulette number 86. Getting ready for Christmas. Oh my gosh. Uh, I saw somebody's tree was up. Who was that? I think Allie Cope. Allie Cope, who is our, our guest this Friday. Her tree. She put it up today. I don't, I don't, I don't have that kind of ambition. I'm wondering if I'll put, I'll, oh well, whatever. Okay, shall we get started? Let's do it. How am I? I'm, I'm doing fine. How are you, Roberta? <laughs> I'm doing fine. Just, it was a beautiful day. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Mary Gunn. Welcome to Fun University. Hello, I'm Mary Gunn. I'm Mary Gunn, fun founder and head professor of Fun University. Welcome to episode 80, what did I just say? 86, where we are going to tear apart the parameters of craft roulette, number 86, um, including the four, what were they? They were, I wrote them down. There was a little chubby. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about warm colors. Oh, that opened a Pandora's box. We're going to talk a little bit about it's a sign, but mostly not. And then crumpled paper. We're going to talk about the character of paper. If you've never thought of paper crafting and care that each kind of paper has its own traits and characteristics, stay tuned. We just might open a few doors for you. Um, get you some new thinking involved. Um, maybe not. Maybe you can tell me a few things. I do have a couple cards to make for you tonight. And um, maybe some ideas. Maybe that you have heretofore not considered or have forgotten. There's so much like that with me. I've done it for so long. I have forgotten very many things, but that is what Bunny University is. We are right here on Bunny Trail Hall on the campus of Fun University. And we, I've been doing Fun University now for several years, but it's always here on Tuesday night on YouTube, 6.30 Central Time. Let's go down to paper and get our class started because you guys have Christmas trees to put up. Yes, any number of things. Okay, so the first thing we were going to hit on is this little guy called a little chubby. Nope, that's not a little chubby. That is not. This is a little chubby. A little chubby is a size that I made up, um, as far as I know, uh, several years ago for Fun University because I'm not a huge fan of, I know, don't, you, if you're going to throw something, make sure they're 20s. Um, I'm not a huge fan of slim lines. I think they're a little bit uh, narrow and, uh, I mean, you know, it's just something. But anyway, these do fit and that's just the beautiful thing about slim, slim lines and little chubbies. They do fit into a business size envelope, which is kind of a groovy thing. So you don't have to make an envelope, which is also groovy. Unless you want to, of course. And so it doesn't take any extra postage in the United States. Don't know about anybody else. But I like it. It is, you take an eight by eight piece of paper, ta-da, and you fold it into four by eight. And so you've got this great big canvas to work on. And um, you've got 32, if you count these little squares, you know, 32 square inches to work on, which is actually quite a bit of space. I went ahead and um, did a couple other sizes for you so you could see what they're like. Here is a standard A2 size card. If you put it on top of a little chubby, you can see that it hangs over just a little bit, like a fourth of an inch, something like that. And you only, and this, but you have this much extra room. Okay, just had a little microphone adjustment. If you look at a slim line, which is supposed to be eight and a half by three and a half by all, all good things, um, they are, 
it's just a little longer and a little skinnier. I always say that these guys are shorter and they, they're like the, I don't know. Anyway, they uh, eat a few extra donuts and they, and they hold on to them a little longer, kind of like me, because I retain donuts. Um, so just thinking in terms of canvas space, you've got a lot of good size there. You don't have to worry about the up or down of it because it's gonna be a side fold. So you can have it a top fold or a side fold either way. So you don't have to worry about the portrait or landscape. I think it's a great size, um, lots of variety, very good for drama. If you have a card, for instance, that you need to <laughs> punch some pack or pack some punch, there we go. Um, little chubby might be a great, a great little token for you. Another thing, okay, consider the office card. Have you ever worked in an office where the office card <laughs> gets passed around? I used to work in an office and if you donated to the gift, you got to write into the office card. But if you didn't donate to the gift, um, which was a preset amount, I believe, you didn't get to write in the office card. So guess who's I, my my office card? I was never in it. Um, anyway, <laughs> think of how much space you have to write a story, add a photo, um, have all the people in the office write their names with a note. You've got all that. Or if you, my parents, get a load of this one. My parents used to have a card and it said something about, yep, yep, you're part of the family. You've got the family nose, family eyes, family smile. And now you have, and you open it up and it was really cute. And it said, now you have the family card. And uh, they would, we would pass it back and forth to each other, write a little note with a date on what, it was kind of like a scrapbook card. It was very cool. Anyway, this would be a great size for a scrapbook card, circle letter kind of thing where you write to each other ends up with somebody at the end of the year, whatever. And, um, or just write a whole bunch of ideas and then give it to somebody at the end of the year. Why, wow, they're fabulous. There's so many things, but this has a lot of, of area to work on much more than an A2. I think it's, it's great for a big stamp. It's great for multiple bigger stamps. It's great for big stencils, big florals, big sentiments, um, big words, anything that you want big and, and expressive. This is a great, great card size. So enjoy it. I hope you will try it. I do have a suggestion as you get into this trying thing of the little chubby. Let me get out a cutter. Very good. This is just a cutter, <laughs> nothing exciting about that. This is a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Nothing very exciting about that. If you are going to cut a little chubby, you just cut it into eight by eight. So you put your paper right there on the eight, turn it again and you get at eight by eight and you've got one little chubby ready to fold. But if you don't wanna do that and you wanna have some practice, you can also cut that 12 by 12 into, keep cutting, cut into four practice sheets. And you don't even have to pay extra. <laughs> there you go. Now you have four practice sheets for little chubbies. And then if you like this size or you come up with something you haven't, you don't feel like you have wasted a whole card, you can trim it and put it on a 12 or an eight by eight piece of cardstock that's folded at four inches and you will have a regular card. This then can be a little piece that you work with. Yes, 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 that's what I'm talking about. So that's what I would suggest well, if you're getting used to them and um, you don't really want to spend, you don't, you're not, you don't want to commit to the card thing, um, but you working with an eight by four piece is a fun thing to do. Then you can also remember that you can make four by fours. So a lot of fun with that concept. Warm colors, you wanna talk warm colors. That was kind of a, <laughs> we threw you around and tossed, treated you poorly with that one. Um, generally, artistically speaking, warm colors are sub usually these bad boys. There's the things that are associated with the sun. Um, but if you start going into stars, which are also very, very hot, which the sun is a star, you're going to get some blue. Remember the, the term, oh, for the blue blazes. And blue blazes are actually hotter 
than red blazes. That's um, that's why you don't have like red. <laughs> it can be red hot, but blue blazes are hotter. So we did have a little bit of <laughs> discussion with what warm colors are. It was pretty fun. Um, again, craft roulette is not a a format kind of show, except for the four parameters. It is not something that we tell you what you have to have to do. The parameters are set to open up opportunity for you to create. It's a creative expression show, and that's why I love it. Um, I follow directions very, very poorly, and um, I get sidetracked and interested in something else at about the second paragraph. So um, I just, I love the format where we just throw out a few things for you and then you just take the, take the reins, run it through your filter and see what you come up with. Because you, you have an entire lifespan of experience. You have, a, you have, I bet you've watched a few YouTubes. You've probably seen a few people make cards. You've probably seen a few people do techniques. We don't do any of that on on uh, craft roulette we don't do that much of it here <laughs> so anyway it's all different but we did have some green which was interesting there is and i did want to mention this uh that one kind of made me pause and go "Ooh, yikes i don't know if i should ex should keep that but there is a point in a fire where you can get a small flick of green and especially when you add certain um, substances to it. So I left it and it was okay. There, uh, I don't think you see a lot of purples when you are talking about warm colors, but uh, that's kind of what warm colors are about. We did, I did send out a thing on stars and the, and the temperatures of stars, uh, which was kind of a fun thing. Um, it's a sign. You guys went crazy with it. There's traffic signs. There's season, signs of the season, signs and wonders, signs of the times, mathematic signs. Um, you can go to craftroulette.live and go to the gallery for episode number 86 and see so many creative ways that you guys did um, signs. I absolutely liked it. One thing that really, those kind of things make me think, I go, you know, when I put a parameter on there, I have an idea of what it can become. And it's usually some well, I think it's pretty broad. I will say that. I will think it's pretty broad and that I've thought of multiple things that you could do with it enough that um, I think you could have fun with it. But n it never fails. Um, you guys come back with all, all sorts more of ideas than I ever, ever have. So um, I think small and, <laughs> and then you guys just show me. That. I think I'm thinking pretty big, but then I find out that I'm thinking pretty small. So do investigate the galleries of craftroulette.live. They are fabulous and so incredibly creative. This was my card. Um, you can see the warm colors that I used. I did do some drawing on here. I was going to put some cactus. I need to probably erase those. But um, this was my card and I did the crumpled paper in the background. So it was not a, it was not a featured element. Um, definitely the... The sign was right here. It wasn't really big and, and pronounced either, but it was all backed up by, by these guys. These were all supporting the sign. So anyway, that was kind of a fun little card. I do have some things. Do you want to see some things? First, we're going to talk about paper. Um, there are sometimes when we, as paper crafters, especially card makers, I think these days, uh, when you say something about paper crafting and cards, it, oftentimes you think of cardstock and pattern paper, which is usually a cardstock weight. Think of six by six little pattern papers and um, beautiful pattern papers. They're so enticing. And all those beautiful rainbow layers and layers of beautiful cardstock. Um, but you know, there are other papers out there and they do let you have different experiences. So the first one that I'm going to show you tonight, and then we'll make something out uh, similar, but not the same. You're just fine. Jeannie, guess what I've been doing this whole time? Just talking. This was made out of copy paper and then put on a card stock. And it's just, it's just very thin. There's nothing. This was stenciled. I crumpled it up after 
after I stenciled it, and then I ran it through my die cut machine to flatten it out. I think it's great. I think it's a great card. It's it was super fast, and really quite fun. Um, again, you when you are doing a stenciling when they're overlapping each other, make sure that you're careful with the colors that they turn out pretty when they do overlap. These two, um, a little bit questionable, but they were fine. They just kind of acted as a, as a shadow. But if you have a piece of copy paper handy, it may just be the thing you need for a thin layer on a card. That You're not going to get that thicker. I did put a little piece of cardstock here. But you could also do other things with that. You could just ink that edge, tear that edge, um, tie that edge off. Many, many things you could do and not make it a bulky, bulky card. Um, especially if, okay, here's something to think about. You know, I, I love scrapbooking. Yeah, just a little bit. And, um, so if you have some kind of scrapbooking card that you are going to send to somebody, the things that you can do to minimize the bulk for something so that you can put pictures in here, um, it's probably a good idea so that you don't end up getting into the package rate, which is the one that you would go home from the post office with nothing in your pocket. Um, but this just a piece of copy paper. And something else you can do with copy paper that is harder to do with um, paper, cardstock, is you can, you really can... You can fold it. You can pleat it. Do you remember the pleat thing that we've had on on the parameters that makes everybody goes, why do we have pleats on there? Um, pleating with copy paper is brilliant. It just goes back and forth. And I'm looking for something. There it is. It just goes back and forth and back and forth. And it doesn't get all bulkified. Like, uh, just consider if you are using around if you know much about fabric think about how thick a thick wool skirt is <laughs> oh the pleats oh the pleats of a kilt but if you had pleats of some lightweight material you're going to be much more comfortable so unless you're trying to stay warm so if you're wanting to do pleats you can do pleats with copy paper first most most of us just have copy paper, and so it's not something you ha have to go and pick up. So that's or the drape thing. Okay, so when you pleat, you miss one. You fold it, and you miss one, and so that it takes quite a bit of material, but it doesn't get too bulky that way. But if I did the same thing with a piece of cardstock, this would be really getting kind of fat. So if you're wanting to do something, this is also handy when you're doing or pleading for a junk journal to add pages on. Well, I didn't fold that very carefully, did I? That's all right. None will come up. So if you want to add little pages to something, you can do it like that too. Have you ever done that? It's really fun. <laughs> I won't do it right now. But you can do it this way, and you just pleat something. And so if you have something a little thinner to start with, it will not make your project so darn heavy and bulky. So then you can just add pages, to da turn it. This is really a bad example. Page, turn it. Page, turn it. And then you've got these little pages. And you can put those inside a card, no problem. And even if it's not pictures, but it's just additional inf additional vim images, or if you want to have a story inside there, if you want to have a, a sentiment that kind of builds itself up, you can do something like that. It's kind of like thinking of one of those cards that has the four panels that go across. And you see them all at once, but if you can do four panels right there and make it part of a story or a book, it's awesome. I like it. So for bulk, just think of copy paper. It may be, it may be handier than you think it may be. You may be surprised at all the things it can do. Another thing that copy paper can do, besides <laughs> just be scrap paper, 
And if you're going to try to cut it with a die cut or a punch, you might want to put a couple layers together so it doesn't get stuck in there. I don't know if this is going to work so hot because it's all different sizes. Yeah. Okay. You can make amoeba flowers. <laughs> amoeba flowers are like the microscopic amoeba. That's what I always, at least that's what I call them. And you're going to start with a rough circle. Amoebas do not have a really defined shape, so you don't have to worry too much. And then you start cutting the, the edges into uh, a rather organic, wonderful amoeba. Okie doke. Now you've got all these little petals, all these darling little petals that you can just squash and make into paper wads. And this is where the paper crumpling came into, what made me think of it. You can also do this with something like um, vellum, but vellum is stiff and it is recalcitrant. It does not like to give. It is a very stiff paper, but this is just folds up so nice. You can also spray these or dampen them with a cloth. And then you can make them into little posies. You can either layer them to make them into a beautiful little multi-petal flower, or you can make multi-flowers with petals, or you can think of something else. You can use your brush on them. I would do it probably before, before I crunched them. You can use colored cardstock or card, no, no, no. You can use colored copy paper. You can use paper like um, notebook paper. You can use letters that you've gotten in the mail. <laughs> you can use books. You can use all sorts of stuff. And then you can layer these up. They're all scrunched. If they were pretty colors, they'd really be pretty and put a brad through them, right down the middle. Or another, if you don't have any brads, you might want to try this. This may be a little bulky, but you can take some twine. This is actually going to be very cute. I've never done this before. It's a very good idea. Mary, kiss your brain. Put a big old knot on it. And then we're going to have this little end. We're going to stick that through there, but we're going to make ourselves an aglet first. An aglet is that little uh, thing on the end of your tennis shoelaces that keep... So you can put your tennis shoelaces through the holes, which I don't know if they have a special name. But aglet is the special name for that little, that little hard part at the end of... If you had a, a big clubby needle you could do it too at the end of a tennis shoelace okay so that should help I may have to punch a hole in here oh he's not gonna he's I'm gonna want to rip it um, so there we go we'll just pull that through one at a time we can we can work with that This is something you can do when you're not at your craft desk. Ooh, I tore that one a little bigger. You can do this when you are sitting and you have a piece of paper that you find. You don't have to have all this stuff at your craft desk, even though it's always wonderful. I don't know what you'd use. Maybe some string. You can always tie a button on it. There's some... There's the stamen and the pistols and all that good stuff. And then here comes this guy. Just coming right down, right down there. And he's a pretty little flower for just some scrap paper. I think so. Who knew? Anyway, so you can do some really, you, this would be much harder to do with a 
thick um, a thick cardstock that doesn't want to behave very nicely. So you can just crunch this up. But, and if you do wet it, it kind of keeps its shape. It's, it dries and it will remember where you have scrunched a little better. But you can do all sorts of um, techniques on this before you make it into a flower. I think it's kind of a fun little thing. I hope you do too. Um, we'll just set him off to a side. You can put... <laughs> but before, let me go ahead and re uh, overthink this. Um, let's just put him on something. Oh, I have a new tether here. I forgot. Let's see. I think this might be kind of a... This could be kind of a pretty little... Even with an aglet on it. It has some potential here. Some Edgar Allan potential. Let's see. Go ahead. Edgar Allan Poe. And let's go ahead and glue him on. Then we'll glue him on to the, the bottom. This is why we call it Bunny Trail Hall. <laughs> this was not on the agenda. My very well thought out agenda. It really is. I do these ridiculous note things. Anyway, that's going to be just fine. And then we'll let him the top you can put a little a little something cut him off put him on a card and you got something fun to do <laughs> there we go yep we're doing a new mic tonight so okay that's one thing let's see what we've got over here oh yes this is this is you know funny thing I was going I wish I had um a, I'm gonna go to the thrift store and see if I can find some recipes and then I thought, you know, you've got recipe books you never use, so why don't you get them out, you silly, silly girl? So I went ahead and got a Rachel Ray, nothing against Rachel Ray or anything. I think she's just Marv. And um, I got one of her little cookbooks out, and I've started using it as part of the part of the crafty stuff. So this is just a page from a cookbook. And the colors, I thought... Uh, this is pink for so there's pink I yellow just because and then this I thought this green looked pretty good with that so and then I pulled out a handmade stencil so I thought we'd go ahead and just and this is a little bigger than a eight by four but I thought it might make it might it may be horrible but we are willing to try if it's any good at all so I'm going to go ahead and just, woohoo, it started there. Yes, we're starting, we're testing a new mic. How did that, we'll see how that woohoo worked out. <laughs> uh, so we'll just do some, uh, some circles and do some light, light and dark areas so that they look real pretty. I am going to keep the dark on the same side, basically. Just so I can feel like there's some weight involved. Speaking of weight, oh, poor Boom Boom. Our dog Boomer, darling dog that he is, went to the vet today. When we got him from the pound, he was, <laughs> he was, they had him on the chart at 58 pounds. I thought, well, that's a pretty good sized dog, you know, not too big. He got on the scale today, and he flipped those numbers. He is now 85 pounds, and they're talking 10 pounds he needs to lose. Oh, so poor Boomer. He is very food motivated. It's going to be a very sad couple times here, but he'll be okay. But yep, yep, he he is he has eaten well since he found a home. I'm gonna. Since this is the bottom, this is the darker, darkest color, I will go ahead and put one, another one at the bottom so I have some nice weight. And I'll double it up so we have even darker green. That'll be delicious. Like a quesadilla. Hope this doesn't matter. I am going to trim this, so don't worry terribly much. Don't fret that it's going to not look so good right now, because it's not. Okay, doke. I think I'll change sides. Sizes, not sides. And this is just a piece of cardstock. You can do it with copy paper, but it won't last as long. You can do it with vellum. 
but uh, word to the warning or some quote unquote stencil paper. Word of warning to those who may be using vellum. Sometimes it stays a little wet, so you may end up getting uh, another color if you change colors without wiping it down real well. This is kind of fun. This is very playful. How are we doing here? Doot, doot, doot. Maybe a little peekaboo over here on the three minutes and the sh information on the shrimp. Taking care of those shrimp. Then we're going to go little guy. I do want to leave some white space. It doesn't need to be all covered up. It's not the middle of winter yet. So... It'll be prettier that way. And the yellow and the pink is going to be a little bit of a eh, less than perfect match. But it's, I don't think they're so dark that it's going to make a heck of a lot of difference. Not a lot. You can use makeup brushes or whatever you have for this kind of deal, too. I don't know how big my eight inch spread is here. There we go. I think that's probably okay. Let's, oh, look. I put it right in the ink, right in the middle. Look at it. There we go. So we've got something else to work with. Let's cut that down. I think I'll cut it a little less than four. I'm going to start with four on one. Let's see. This will be a little bit uh, art journal -y, junk junk journal -y kind of approach, but I kind of like it. And then we're going to take one of those sheets, wherever they may be. My little practice sheets. There's one. Here's one. And we'll just slip it under there. Isn't that festive? I think it's so darn festive. Um, you could always darken the edges. You could put it on a small mat. You could cut it down a little more. You could cut it into um, sections and spread them apart a little bit. Um, you can rip it up a little bit and then and then push it all together so that you can't really read the recipe. <laughs> so um, let's just see what we got here. Well, I think we're just going to leave well enough alone and figure out how to how to finish this bad boy it's gonna be so thin I really do rather love this uh, okay yeah of happiness pop of quesadillas this would be uh really fun for uh thank you for if you were ever if you're ever invited out which way <laughs> If you're ever invited out for a Mexican dinner or something, this would be a great thank you um, kind of deal. You can always bring in something else too, you know. You can always over, over stencil, especially when you're just using old recipe books and you don't really care. So you can always bring in another stencil and add some darkening or some interest. You can also, if you'd like, where'd that stencil go? Fiddle -dee -dee, there it is. You can also stamp inside there with little tiny shapes. Um, little hot peppers, for instance. If you had a little jalapeno stamp or something, you can always stamp inside those too. It's a little, if you're going to do some stamping inside these, though, in word to the wise, the cardstock is a little bit thick, and sometimes it'll be a little bit um, hard to get right up to the edge. It leaves a little tiny gap sometimes. So just be careful with that. That is something that if you want to, for instance, do something like that and you're frustrated because it leaves a space, here's something you can do. Just take this, be very, very gentle so that you don't end up cutting the edge and getting a nick. If this is a shape that's very um, standard, it should be, you should be okay. I don't know what that, I don't know where I was going with that. Never mind. And then um, just cut out a, a wedge. 
There you go. And so then you can come in there and stick that on there if you want to do some stamping. I sh probably should show you what I mean, but I don't have anything set up for that. But that's going to be nice and thin. The only thing that you do have to realize that is that the ink can bleed through that a little faster than it will bleed through this, some stencil material or some vellum. So um, anyway, but if you have if you're frustrated because you try to stamp on a on a stencil and you get that little space and you and you hate and you hate or hateful for the rest of the day, we don't want you to be hateful. So um, this is very big and black and probably a little more than I need. But let's go with the eight inch across. Let's make him a little smaller, but not too small because he's got to hold his own on this big boy. And then we can add something along there, put a little sentiment. We're going to be good to go. I don't know what I want to put on there, but see, you can just do that and then do a circle, a shape with a a little circle around it or something, a black with white in the side, um, maybe a little pink on the edges and a thank you. You're good to go. I think that would be fine. <laughs> there you go. That's an idea. Don't forget, you are not limited to craft paper that you bought at the craft part of a craft store. <laughs> you have papers available for you to use and explore, and they're most likely already the papers you have. Here is, while well, we're talking about amoeba flowers and scrap paper, this card was made with copy paper that I had done bl ink blending on. And then I went ahead and took a stencil and put some neutral ink on it. Um, made some amoeba flowers out of the farmer's almanac and then cut smaller ones with some more scrap paper and uh, just did my own little doodly do inside there. Gave him a little stem doodly do. Added some white for the leaves and some little designs, including little tiny butterflies that I drew. This was the stamp. I didn't use stamps other than that. Don't forget, you don't have to have a stamp for everything either. So uh, you can do a lot of things that are very, very basic. This week in, um, in our Patreon group, I, I posted a, a way to make a, a stick figure, which, you know, you forget. But there are, if you look for shapes, that's a, it's a really great key. But this is what I call an amoeba flower. I think they're very cute. You can just use different sizes, paper. And then you've got centers and you can put sequins or buttons or whatever you have. Um, but that's just copy paper that I had actually used like I just did with this, except more, um, and made it into a card. So fun, fun stuff all around us all the time. Here is another one. We're going to go into more standard paper here. This is going to be some pattern paper. And I made this pretty little flower. The little chubby is big. You've got some room to move around on. So this is a little chubby with a five petal flower. You can put more petals in there. Um, much more or whatever you want or less or skinnier or fatter or whatever you want. You can make them rounder, more pointed. You can make them like fringe. You could, wouldn't that be, that'd be good. I might like that. And then I put it on some, some pink tissue, tissue paper that I did put some white dots on, but then I sprayed some Avery L on it. Word to the wise. And I know you guys are also wise. Avery L on tissue paper is pretty. It really is. Can you see the shimmer? Yeah. Avery L shimmer spray is pretty, but it made this bleed. That was dumb. But, it, you know, it's that's just how it's okay. We're just calling it a textured sentiment at this point. <laughs> and if we're lucky, we'll see it on the wheel someday. Okay. So I'm going to take, let's see, how many do we want? Just a variety of papers here. We're gonna put the skinniest on top, so, cause that's gonna be, we're not gonna go any wider than our skinniest. So we'll put 
three, four, five. Five pieces of pattern cardstock. Okie doke. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a clip on them. And I'm going to pull in. I don't I think I can do it with this this little guy. But you know, oh, I didn't think that clip would go under. It may be a little bit of a problem. So what I discovered when I was making the pink one on the other trimmer was just to come, whoops, he's too tall. Tall boy. Tall boy, tall boy. Is just put it in on the other side. So, that the clip doesn't even be a part of the process. We're just gonna line it up, then we can pull it out. Oh my gosh! Where's my Wheaties when I need it? Now we're all the same size. It should be all the same length. This is how big, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, things are starting to fall. Three inches, so we'll just cut it right about there. No harm, no foul so far. I don't see any other tape around, so. If you have a good grip, a good firm grip, then you're fine with it. You don't have to do this part, but I've got a little piece of masking tape. Yep, this is the old fashion kind, not mint, not purple. This is the kind you can get at Walmart, at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you shop. And we'll just stick these guys together. Now we're gonna think in terms of we're going to make our flower petal by thinking in terms of a very common shape, or it's going to be like when you're writing a parentheses. That's all it's going to be. Now we're going to, if you want to, you can go on the back, find, a, find the main point right there, and do a, a drawing to that point. The top I had my top, pardon me, I had my top pointed, but I had my bottom flat. So I don't know if it matters, but that's what I did. The only other thing that I wouldn't want to do too much was to make, have flat sides. So we can cut inside that just a little bit. And if you're getting a flat side, <laughs> you, that one piece is real thick and it's just being hateful. There we go. That's just to hold, help you a little bit. It's not gonna be a perfect fix. But I don't need a die. I don't need anything. I can do it. It's like, I can do it, Mommy. I can do it all by myself. <laughs> then you can come back in. If it is really, really not smooth, make it on purpose. Just make it not smooth on purpose all over and you'll be fine. See, that one's got a little flat one in there, so I'll just give it just a little help. Here we go. Looks like little uh, surfboards. That'd be cute too. You can make little surfboards. Oh my gosh, that would be cute. Okay, and then um, a little ink on the edges. Never hurt anybody. I think for you could do the colors or for my purposes, I'm going just with a little black. I was gonna line, put these on a piece of black cardstock and uh, make them really pop. But I think I might just do it this way. My little surfboards. I don't like really this much. I don't like it black this much. <laughs> I should have done a little lighter or some blues and then made Orange and yellow too, but oh well. I bet you I have more scraps. These came right out of my scrap bin, out of my little tiny baby bear scrap bin. So that's a whole nother story. Okay, here is my little chubby. It's going, now we get to figure out how we want to do it. I like the big bold guy in the middle. Mm. 
Oh, I probably need another color, don't I? Or I'm going to have two blues right next to each other, which ish, is a little less than ideal. So, I don't know. What do we have? No, that's a little too much, isn't it? So let's try it. Could always make a couple. You can make these petals not even be the same shape. Why not? They're, they're your petals to play with. Now we'll have a six petal flower. And it'll be okay. We just won't have one quite in the middle and that's okay. Looks like a peacock, <laughs> NBC peacock. <laughs> and then I just had a one inch hole punch, I believe, which is right here on my mask. Hot dog, hot dog. I believe this is the piece that I cut the first one out of. There we go. And we'll just start throwing some glue on here and calling it good. They're not all going to fit on top of on, in here, right? But we can always add more glue. Go on the other side. That's okay too. And then we can flip it over. If we can't see any glue, we can add some more. Because we used it up. There's probably really neat ways to do this where you don't get gluey. That's somebody else's channel, I'm pretty sure. I don't mind being a little gluey. I always liked it when putting glue on my fingers in grade school. I always found it, found it rather entertaining. I was obviously a kind of bored child. There we go. And this little guy and we can start messing with its placement that's why we want to do that with some glue that doesn't dry real fast you can also mess with who's on top who's on second who's on first that kind of thing okay before you get married to that paper there let's <laughs> There we go. I'm just let's go ahead and just help you out just a little bit. You can crumple these too, obviously. You don't have to leave them straight. You can crumple them, you can fold them in half the long way so they look dimensional. That's all just fine. I did pull out some tissue paper. My fingers are sticky, which is not always the best thing for tissue paper. But I do. Now, tissue paper is cheap as can be. So you don't have to, you don't have to be, act like it's real precious because it's, it's cheap. You can get a lot for not much. I'm not a big dollar tree aficionado like some. But man alive, if you want something like that, that's great. Okay, well, I'm not even going to worry about this being real straight. You can tear it, too, just about as easily, as probably more easily than this. So let's use our panel. There's the edge. Let's put it down here just a little bit. Let's see if it'll rip right here on the paper. Hot dog. Oh, my stars. We just love that move right there, Miss Mary, a whole lot. Didn't even have to get out of ruler. Whoa. There we go. Now, before we put him down, though, give him a good scrunch. I know, Jeannie, that's how we used to get our fingerprints. <laughs> I hope you're getting some creativity nudges there, Jeannie. It's a terrible thing when you feel in a funk. I hate it. So there we go. And I found with the pink, you didn't really have to worry about showing this through it. But I wouldn't put this on the tissue paper. It'll rip for, for certain, certain, certain. So put it on your cardstock instead. 
and then lower it down. Lower down the boom. And see, you can't really see it. You can see that something's holding it down, but you can't see the ATG. So we will go with that. Push it out, iron, just like you iron. What's that? And this little guy goes back on there. And then you can just stamp on here. Um, you know, it's a, one of those things, if you stamp on here and it doesn't show up very well, you can always just do something else and cover it. I don't have a stamp with me here. How about that? Um, that one's too big. That's, I got this out because it's such a huge stamp. I thought, oh, that's a perfect stamp for a little chubby. It's just massive. But he could, let's see, if he moves over there and this moves over here... Would that work? Does he have to be black? I don't know if he, he's got this black here. He may need a little pop. I don't know. I don't know. That may be a surprise for you in the morning. <laughs> but you can put this little guy down. You can also take your grab mark or a pen and add some stitches. And my stitches always look like my tension on my machine needs adjusting. They are never, they're never straight. And do one right up the middle. We're gonna put that machine at long stitches too. None of those small satin stitch stuff. If you have dark cardstock that you're doing this with, you can do it with a white one. That would be so cute. It would look dynamite. Think of this as a, you could, how about this for a poinsettia? You can make these a little shorter, a little more triangular. Red, blue, or not blue, red, that light green, gold. This would be really pretty little special card. Change up, change up this. How about a big snowflake? Oh man, I love this. I do, I do. And, uh, and here, I just put a smaller, a smaller little vellum circle, poked two holes, and stuck it right on, on through there. Here's something too, if you want to, um, I make, this is just a card front, and I made notes on the back, so when I teach, I can forget to look at them. And that's exactly what I've done. But, um, it's all good. I did remember these things. Well, looky there. I did remember these things. It's okay. I don't think I missed anything. Oh, well, I learned my own lesson. I love that. I'm not sure what I want on there. A little dose of happy is probably going to be fine. But you can add little, little sparkles. You can add little splatters. Um, you could do any, a button, um, little bugs flying about, happy as can be. You could put a little string across here, that would be lovely too. Um, you could add, how about this one? You can make it this way and add a little stem. Yep, yep, with another little, some other little leaves. Now you're going to want your stem, now I obviously am going to do this, so, you're going to want your stem, I'm going to make a mark there, and a mark here, so I know where I'm hoping to aim for. You're going to want your stem to be, um, you can always test it on scrap paper or scrap tissue, see if it works. But, we're going to just go ahead and give it an arky kind of thing, and then a parallel arky. Move your arm, not your hand. Only if you want it to be easier. Now, if you really want to make it hard, go ahead and just do this. <laughs> that will be very hard. Um, but you're welcome to do it that way. I just don't say that I told you to do it that way. Um, who are you going to tell about this anyway? You know, honestly, this, this would be real. So we can go ahead. Ooh, that would make some pretty leaves. I, you know, let me get a little, some little green green stuff. Here's some green stuff we can make some little leaves out of. Bunny 
Trail Hall. I'm going to fold this in half and cut two out at once. Just thinking of what a pair of parentheses look like. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. Now it looks like a mustache. Yes. Just make yourself a little mustache. And then this little guy can go right here. But we can cut it in half. And so he can have angles. And then, and then, and then we can have, um, they can cross over. That's fine. We can darken these guys up too. Oh, this makes a whole different card. Eureka. So you can do monochrome, you can do multichrome. And then this is the one I was talking about, folding it like you're going to make a whistle. And then if you want to, you can flip it back the other way. And give it a, a smudge. A shadow. Gosh, I do go on. Every week I think, oh, I'm going to make it short this week. And then I would put a jewel or something right there. You could also have done that, you know, this thing with this as well. Just cut some paper out and um, and made the shape. I don't think I can do that now. I think I have sealed my fate. Oh, if only I had not sealed my fate. But I did. Um, I could fix this, but it would be kind of difficult. But not too difficult. Let's just take this. See if I can see through it. Nah, nah, it's okay. Um, this is too thick. Always keep your stuff around here. There, ooh, that one's that one's better. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so I will. I will cut this bigger. I'm just gonna make myself a template, and then we'll cut it just a little bit bigger. And if you see a line underneath it, we'll think of something else to do. Okay. There's no end to fixing. Oh, well, I guess there is a terminus at some point, but you got to go a lot of paths before you call it done. Yeah. Sometimes, though, you got to know when to say when. Yeah, all times, actually. That was a silly statement. All times you have to know when to say when. Okie doke. Can we get you on here? You're like a snake. Since you're not going to be able to see the pattern too well, I'm not going to worry too much about it being straight toward that little piece of... Well, you have already picked up some new friends, haven't you? Good for you. Nice social skills. Or a piece of tape. But you know, tape kind of find is attractive. <laughs> People stick to it. Okay, I'm going to take this a little ways down and then go there and then come back in to finish this masterpiece off. Oh my gosh, did I do this right? It's not going to flip over and be wrong, right? Shouldn't be because I don't have to flip it over. Oh, by golly. Oh, by gosh, by golly. It almost worked. Dang it. Dang it. Didn't quite work. Almost. That. That. Vexation. Can I bend it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can just bend it. Okay, so we are almost. Oh, I should put some black on there edge it, but I'm so, so excited to get this done. I, is there anybody in there? There you are. There we go. Oh, I can slip these underneath too, then you won't see their, 
little nastiness and I will put some glue on here. And, oh, oh, just stop. Okay, all right. Let's see if we can stick this under there. Could cover up our, any mistake we had, too. Oh, looky there. Now that's kind of bright and pretty. Look at there, would you look at there? Um, little sign right there, tie it and just have a little note there and you've got something really, really happy. I like a little happy card. So there you go, we got, oh my goodness, how did I make this mess so fast? Um, I'm an artist at it. My art, making a mess. All right, so we got a couple cards here. I hope you found one or two ideas that you'd not heard of or forgotten that you think you might be able to use because you spent some time with me and I do appreciate it. Let's see what we got. And then we got bubble face here. Yep, there we go. I don't know. I don't know where to put you. Where can we put you? Get over there. Everybody move to the right. <laughs> move to the right. Can't leave it, can't take the train, can't uh, get out of this station until everybody moves to the right. Yeah, little chubbies. Paper. Think of the characteristics of paper. Think of how hard it is to scrunch up vellum. Think how easy it was to use some copy paper instead. Find some old books that you might be able to cut up and make some kind of fun things there. Um use some this you know you, you see a lot of oh paper strip scrap classes but make some flowers out of them you know there's a lot more you can do than making strip cards so get out there have some exploration um try out some new things don't be afraid especially if it's just something you've not used in ages um get into this little chubby thing it's just so fun and it's just so much different it's just try it try it lots try it lots and you'll use up some of your supplies too faster than if you're trying to make a slimline or an a tube because they're just too tiny they don't use stuff <laughs> thank you guys so much we do want to thank these folks that make our shows possible honestly i was paying uh the credit card bill again this and we're always on time don't worry about that we're not like behind on credit cards or anything but um yes do hit like we appreciate it subscribe share uh, hit the notification button and always hit that thumbs up for us and leave comments too i i hear they like that um, anyway, yep, paid a bill today that, um, we don't do things like everybody else does. We do things that, uh, like the, the form where we upload the cards, it's $130 a year to upload those cards. <laughs> so, but I would much rather, oh, where's my microphone? I would much rather have that $130 paid than having to spend 10 hours a, a weekend doing it. So, you know, you got to pay, you got to choose your, choose your battles. So that's one, but you guys make it happen. You're making it happen for lots of people all over the world. And, um, Kiss your brains for that. You know, you're just precious. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, don't know what else. We're going to be on Friday. We're going to have Allie Cope. She is super talented. Um, I, I, and a sweet woman. Uh, you just, I, oh, she's just sweet. So you don't want to miss out and uh, make her sad. <laughs> no problem there. No guilt going. Oh, here's this one too. Dang it. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. But he's a he's my little amoeba card. I think that one is really fun. This would be like a really good class for for cheap for other people to teach other people. <laughs> really cheap, like at libraries. That's what I'm thinking. But because um, you're always trying to find a little class for for folks without spending much money. So, yep, looky there, looky there. I can't stop. 
Oh, I did that too, didn't I? Okay, so we'll just use this scrappy, scrappy do stuff. Oh, it's already glued together, you goofy woman. There we go. Not well, obviously not scrap glued together very well. So that's a bonus. Poor gluing for better living. Yeah, we'll work on that one. But look, that's a pretty little flower too. Isn't that pretty? A little different. And he would have been really pretty if he'd gotten some color on him. Kind of out in the sun, gotten a little blush. Yeah, a little paper makeup. All right, thank you. Kiss your brains, I really appreciate you. Make sure, remember that you can do any of these cards and turn it in for homework on the Fun University Lounge page under media. That's where Sherry sets us up every month so we can see your masterpieces. Um, hope my, I'm looking forward to hearing what I sound like on my new microphone. And yeah, thank you guys so much. Appreciate each and every one of you. We'll see you Friday. Until then, have some fun crafting, shall we? That's a pretty good byline, don't you think? Have some fun from Fun University. I'm good. All right. We'll talk to you. Bye-bye.